Hey everyone, so in this episode of Cerner Hacks, we're going to talk about splitting the screen. What do I mean by that? Well, as you can see in the default screen in Cerner, you have a screen that has all the information at the top here, and then you have to scroll all the way down to get to your history of present illness or your documentation section. So we're going to split the screen so it's going to look a little bit like this. So as you can see here, this is a much better way of documenting. You've got all the workspace on this side and all the reference material in the middle. So we're going to show you how to do that in this episode. Stay tuned. Welcome to Cerner Hacks. So in the last video, we showed you how to move around our tab menus to make things a bit more efficient for you when you open up a patient's chart. So in this video, we're going to do a deeper dive into each of the uh, tabs themselves. So in the rounding tab, when you first open a patient's chart, you'll see that it's organized in that all the reference materials at the top. And when you go down to documenting, it's all the way at the bottom. This is pretty inefficient in that if you want to reference the material and document them in your, um, in your progress note, you have to refer back up top in order to see everything together. So one more efficient way of doing it is to start moving these boxes to the side. And a lot of these boxes, you'll see the ones that are possible to move into a third column. And we, I call this splitting the screen. So you can move these boxes over by clicking this button. And see what happens here? It moves it onto a, another column. And so you can start documenting. And if you don't want that, you can always click back. Unfortunately, once you click these boxes, this is the order that it which appears. You can't move it up and down once you've um, clicked on the boxes. So if you don't have it in right order, we can always do it again. So the one I like to have the top of the third column is something called the hospital course. The hospital course is a text box that we can move over to the side. And this is a shared document and you can see it's called shared. What I mean by that is when you type something in here, when somebody else opens up their Cerner document on that patient, it will also be there. And this box is useful for summary notes or handover notes or things that you want to communicate to the oncoming physician and that you can collaborate on a discharge summary. So if something's happened in this patient's course and you don't want it to be forgotten, uh, or you want to uh, document the patient's course up to the point where you hand this patient over to the next physician, you can leave it in that box. When the next person comes on and they enter this chart, they can continue from where you leave off. So it's actually a very useful box. And I usually leave that at the top. And we will oftentimes use this box to collaborate on discharge summary, particularly after multiple handovers. The next one I prefer to have the HPI. Uh, HPI, this is your S of your SOAP note. Your physical examination is your O of your soap note, and of course the A and P, which is down here. So this is how I set up my rounding tab. So I have our shared progress note up here. Down here is any information that you want to get pulled into your soap note, your observations, and then obviously your assessment plans. So that's how I set up my roundings tab. My admissions tab, I do a very similar thing. There won't be a shared note here because you're admitting the patient. It's assumed that you won't have any previous history on this admission from the patient. So there's no shared course note on the screen. So your first one will be the HPI, then your physical examination, and then your assessment plan. Okay, so that's uh, how I set up my admissions tab. Discharge tab, it looks a little bit different. Um, there again is the hospital course, which I will move to the third column as my first. And then there's a few other things that you can pull over that's different from the other two tabs. I usually like to put in things like the significant findings after the hospital course. So this will be where your hospital course that you started in the rounding section gets pulled into here. So it's not only shared between physicians, but it's shared between tabs as well. So whatever you put in the roundings, the hospital course will be also pulled in here. So when you're doing the discharge summary, all that gets pulled through. Significant findings, I'll put that over here. Procedures and treatments, post-discharge follow-up, discharge disposition. Let's do assessment and plan. I'm not sure if I really like that order. Uh, maybe I like my assessment plan down here up a little bit higher past, let's say, procedures and treatments provided, but before the post-discharge follow-up. So what we have to do now is we have to move the post-discharge follow-up and discharge this position here. 
And so now you see the order is significant findings, procedures, treatments, assessment, and plan. And then we will do the discharge disposition. Let's move that over and post discharge follow up. Okay. And then if you want the patient instructions at the very bottom. Okay. So this is one way that would probably advise in doing the discharge summary. So when you do your create note down here to the base patient discharge handout or the patient discharge summary, all that information will be pulled in. Okay, so hopefully that helps organize tabs. Uh, and again, once you've uh, completed all these changes, make sure you do the exit before you leave and that way it's uh, saved permanently on the system as your preference when you enter the system so you won't have to do this again. Okay, thanks guys.